Hi, I'm Rob Newbold, CEO of Prochain Solutions. Many people have asked us for more information on the bold claims we have made about successes using the critical chain approach to project management. These claims are the topic of this video. I'll talk about how we measure success and show some examples. There are a few reasons for collecting success data. The first is obvious. We want to be able to say that the approach is great. We want you to try it out. The second is to validate that it works in a particular environment, usually as part of a pilot. If you try it, you need to be able to say afterwards, this works for us. And third, but maybe less obvious, people using Critical Chain need to keep collecting and checking their data in order to make sure they're staying on track. There are two sides to Critical Chain success. One is bottom line benefits. That usually means improved due date performance, or better predictability, reduced cycle times, or greater speed, and greater productivity. The other is the effect of the implementation on the organization. How well did people adopt the changed behaviors? Are the changes likely to persist? Did they love it or hate it? Let's start by talking about bottom line benefits. In a typical example, a large consumer products company applied critical chain to 10 projects and achieved 25 to 50 percent reductions in cycle times. That translated to many millions of dollars in value and a huge return on their investment. You can find many similar examples on our website. We know that each project is unique, which means it's not so easy to say, here's the picture with critical chain and here's the picture without. So where did those numbers come from? What do they really mean? First, let's talk about the three bottom line measurements, speed, predictability, and productivity. Speed typically means the cycle time, shown here with a red arrow, how long projects take start to finish. There are a few ways to measure changes in cycle time. One is by comparing historical data with actual results. This picture, using data from a recent presentation by a major global aircraft manufacturer, shows average cycle times in days for projects completed each month over the course of a year. Projects went from 344 days to 273 days, a 21% reduction. To arrive at these numbers, they had to be sure to compare cycle time data from similar projects. This is the same technique used by the consumer products company I mentioned earlier. Gathering cycle time data isn't always easy. Sometimes it takes a lot of effort, especially if the range of possible values for projects requires many observations. For example, in the pharma world, there is great variation from one clinical trial to the next in number of patients, number of sites, treatment period, and so on. In this example, working with a large pharma company, we created a critical chain template for the standard trials process based on expert information. We then compared it with median historical data and also with the old template in their Enterprise Project Management or EPM system. In going from study kickoff to first patient, the critical chain template took 77 days without buffers and 125 days with. The comparable historical trials took a median of 151 days and the EPM template indicated 152 days. Note that we omitted the time from first to last patient visit, the treatment period, because it tends to be very dependent on the specific study. In this case, the individual pilot projects used tailored versions of the critical chain template. Because those projects came in on time or early, we can be comfortable that this table gives a reasonable picture of the level of improvement that was possible fairly quickly. Taken together, well over 30% reductions in cycle time across these sections of the clinical trials. And this represents only a subset of the improvements that can be made. Here's another technique we use to look at cycle time improvements. This fever chart comes from a project in a large medical devices company. As usual, it shows percent project complete on the horizontal axis and percent buffer used on the vertical. Each data point represents an update to the schedule. This chart shows graphically some major events in the life of the project as buffer was consumed and then recovered. If we analyze the decisions that were made because of the critical chain approach and remove them from the picture, expanding the picture like an accordion, we see a much worse situation. These two graphs allow us to compare the would have been, the upper graph, with the actually was, the original fever chart, and estimate the actual cycle time improvement gained over the course of about five months, in this case more than 16 weeks. If we compare that with the full project duration, it translates to about 30% for this one year project. 
Note that this number is based only on concrete decisions and doesn't take into account less quantifiable improvements like improved visibility, better handoffs, and reduced multitasking. This cycle time data collection can take a lot of work, and of course it must be validated with the project managers. But it also makes a powerful case for using critical chain. If you can calculate the dollars of revenue that a new product is likely to bring in if it's early, you can convert the cycle time improvements to estimates of additional revenue. These numbers look good, but we've actually worked with pharmaceutical and high-tech companies on products that had potential value of well over a million dollars per day. By helping them to take months off the delivery times of those products, they gained hundreds of millions of dollars in value. And this reflects just some of the value of speed. The value of being faster than your competition may add much more. Predictability usually requires checking outcomes, waiting for projects to complete major deliverables, and seeing whether they were early or late. That's not difficult to do. The information also tends to be less sensitive, which is why a major pharmaceutical company stated publicly in 2009, Critical Chain is a project management approach that has enabled our scientists to improve our rate of hitting key development milestones from no more than half the time to nearly 100%. Of course, Critical Chain doesn't guarantee perfect on-time performance. For example, a smaller pharma support organization found that while Critical Chain brought a 30% improvement in cycle times by the end of the first year, their on-time performance had only improved to about 80%. I'll talk about that remaining 20% in a moment. Improved productivity is a common byproduct of a critical chain implementation because we set good priorities and work in a focused manner. It's not easy data to collect, but when you can do it, the results are impressive. We'll usually look at the number of projects completed by the organization in a given time period while correcting for number of workers and complexity of the projects. For example, this picture shows the commitments delivered by the aircraft company I mentioned earlier. They completed 50% more projects over the course of their first two years of implementing critical chain. When this is corrected for decreases in manpower, the actual improvement level goes to 72%. Productivity does present a few measurement difficulties. First, projects may not be comparable because they have different requirements, durations, and so on. Second, large project organizations tend to have people involved with many things, and not all of those things are project work. And third, if your projects take years to complete, it may be a very long time before your measurements are reliable. You can measure any of these elements, speed, predictability, and productivity, on a departmental basis. It can be the simplest way of measuring impact, but you should be careful about that because departmental impact does not necessarily translate to the organization's bottom line. Now I'll move on from bottom line benefits and talk about the effects of a critical chain implementation on the organization. Were the correct behaviors followed, and are the changes likely to persist? This is very important in making sure that the initial results weren't short-term effects that will disappear over time. This picture shows the results of a checklist we administer to project teams each week. The goal represents the number of key behaviors the project team should be practicing at its weekly meetings. Progress is the actual number achieved. When the bar is below the goal over a period of a few weeks, there's often a problem. In this case, the team was able to practice the behaviors consistently for a while. A drop in performance in weeks 8 and 9 was corrected, but the drop starting in week 15 bears looking into. We also collect surveys on which team members can rate the changes in planning from before to after ProChain on a five-point scale. This picture is a typical real-life example of the improvement from before to after the critical chain implementation. We aren't showing the full questionnaire, but the improvements were significant across the boards. Very often during the course of an implementation, the critical chain process exposes problem areas that should be addressed to get even greater improvements. We call these enabling projects. I mentioned earlier that after a year with critical chain, the pharma support organization still had 20% late projects. That wasn't necessarily bad, because they were then able to identify the root causes and address that lateness through enabling projects. It won't surprise you to hear that critical chain doesn't always work. The ProChain methodology is strong enough that the standard reasons initiatives fail, lack of value, lack of leadership support, resistance to change, arise very rarely. That's why we are comfortable talking about implementations in which ProChain assumes some of the risk of failure. What we do see occasionally is a lack of urgency to improve, which leads people to postpone solving their project problems. If you don't want to solve the problem, 
you probably won't implement the solution. Do you feel urgency to have more successful projects? Are you interested in finding out whether ProChain will work for you? You can look for our books, The Billion Dollar Solution and Be Fast or Be Gone. Visit our website at www.prochain.com or contact us at info at prochain.com. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, ProChain Solutions. We expect to be creating more videos soon. Thanks for watching.